Let's take a look at 1.1.1. We have x multiplied by x minus 3 being equals to 0. We are solving for x. It's either x is equals to 0 or x minus 3 is equals to 0. One between the two, right? So x equals to 0 or x is equals to 3. That is the answer to 1.1.1. Uh, we are sticking to the basics really nothing complicated right let's take a look at 1.1.2 we have 2x squared plus 1 being equals to 4x and we're supposed to solve for x correct to two decimal places as soon as the question says correct to two decimal places we are thinking that we might have to use the quadratic formula the quadratic equation so to write this in the standard format we would have 2x squared minus 4x plus 1 being equals to 0. So this is A, this is B, and this is C. Right. So now we're going to see that x is equals to minus B. So minus B in this case is, well, 4 is, uh, minus 4 is B in this case. And then plus or minus uh, the square root of b squared right so minus 4 squared minus 4 ac a is 2 c is 1 and then we divide everything by 2a of which a is 2 right so we have x being equals to so without wasting time let me just go ahead and substitute this in my calculator so we're gonna have uh, plus 4 plus the square root of minus 4 squared minus 4 ac a is 2 c is 1 divided by 2a well a is 2 so i'm getting x is equals to 1.71 or x is equals to so let me change the positive to a minus we have 0 0.29 0 0.29 these are our two answers 1.71 and 0 0.29 there's no other answer except from this. 1.0, 0 something is wrong. 0 0.293, 0 0.2928. It is completely wrong. The question says correct to two decimal places. There's no ambiguity when it comes to rounding off. So these are the only two possible options. Right. 1.1.2. Let's take a look at 1.1.3. So 1.1.3. X squared minus 2x minus 3 is greater than 0. So here we are solving for x. I'll go ahead and find my critical values, right? Uh, in saying that cv, right, I can then equate these to 0 and find those critical values of x and then worry about uh, the answer after. So x squared minus 2x minus 3, we can easily factorize this, right? Uh, two factors of minus 3, when we add, we get... Uh, minus 2 and when we multiply we get minus 3 that is minus 3 and plus 1 this is equals to 0 well we can test this out this is going to give us x squared minus 3x and then plus 2x minus 3 so x squared um actually <laughs> let me do that again let me do that again i know that this is how it looks like when it's factorized so x and x will give us x squared and then we have plus x and then we have minus 3x and then we have minus 3 so this is going to be x squared minus 2x minus 3 okay so i've done that in the correct way so these are the critical values x is equals to 3 or x is equals to minus 1 like i've said on countless videos there's two possible solutions when we get to this point it's either x lies between the two critical values or it lies outside let me show you what i mean when it, when i say that if it lies between the two critical values i'm saying that x is between minus one and three and when i say it lies outside i'm saying that x is less than minus one or x is greater than three these are the possible solutions a and b these are our possible solutions there's no other solution apart from these two so how do we uh, therefore test which solution is correct i'm glad you asked take a look at this so we can substitute a number that exists in this solution right a number between minus one and three is zero if we substitute that number in our equation 
and our condition well our inequality is satisfied then a is our solution but if that is not the case then b becomes our solution automatically so let me substitute zero zero squared minus two multiplied by zero minus three so when you substitute zero we get minus three is greater than zero is this true we know it is not so it means that this is not the solution this is not the solution we can get rid of this this is not the solution so the solution x greater than three or x less than minus one this is the actual solution we can all obviously test that out we can substitute four for instance when you substitute four we get four squared minus two multiplied by four minus three that is five and five is clearly greater than zero so that is the solution 1.1.3 1 1.1.4 1 1 we have 2 to the power 2x minus 2 to the power x plus 2 minus 32 is equals to 0. so as soon as i see equations like this i know that i'm like i'm going to let something be equals to k right i'm going to let something be equals to k so let me show you uh, how this plays out so 2 to the power 2x we can write it as well 2 to the power x everything to the power 2 right 2 just multiply just multiplies 2 uh, just multiplies x and we end up with 2 to the power 2x and then here we can write minus 2 to the power x multiplied by 2 to the power 2 because when you multiply numbers with the same base we add the exponents so that is totally fine and this we can leave as minus 32 and this is equals to zero so we can let 2x be equals to k right in doing that we'll therefore have k squared minus 2 squared is 4 right so we have minus 4k minus 32 being equals to zero and then we can just go ahead and factorize this so let me give that a try we have k k and then two factors of minus 32 of which when we add we get minus for i think minus eight let's say minus eight and plus four would work let's just give this a try and see so this would give us k squared plus 4k minus 8k 8 16 32 minus 32 so k squared minus 4k minus 32 so i'm quite convinced that what i've done is correct right that that is how you can always check you can just multiply out and see if you go back to the same thing so k k is equals to 8 or k is equals to minus 4 but we know that k is 2 to the power x so 2 to the power x is equals to 8 or 2 to the power x is equals to minus 4 obviously we know that this is impossible so we cross it out and we forget about it now let's focus on 2 to the power x being equals to 8 right so 2 to the power x we write 8 with a base of 2 so that is 2 to the power 2 is 4 so 3 is 8 so x is equals to 3 uh, that is 1.1.4 1 .1 quite simple it's not too bad it's not too bad this is uh easy right uh, five easy marks um right and then 1.1.5 1 .1 we have the square root of the square root of minus 2x plus 4 minus x minus x being equals to 2 this is another basic one right we know exactly what we're going to do we're going to isolate the square root here we're going to be left with minus 2x plus 4 being equals to well let's let's just say x plus 2 because x is going to be positive when it goes to that side and then we square both sides we square both sides right sticking to the basics and uh, when we do that we get uh, let's say minus 2x plus 4 i wanted to say 4 minus 2x but it's fine we can just leave it like that and then x plus 2 squared that is x squared plus 4x plus 4 right yes okay uh maybe with that so we're gonna have x squared plus 4x plus 2x when we take it to the other side right so we get x squared plus 6x plus 6x and then 
4 minus 4. That gives us 0. So we have x squared plus 6x being equals to 0. So take x as a common factor. We get x plus 6. This is equals to 0. So x is equals to 0 or x is equals to minus 6. Right. Most of the time when we square, we introduce solutions that are not necessarily true for the equation when it is not squared. Let me show you. Let me demonstrate what I'm talking about. So x is equals to 2. Well, what is x? x is 2. It's easy to see. We're saying that x is equals to 2. But take a look at this. If we square both sides, which is mathematically correct, we get x squared is equals to 4. But what are the solutions of x squared is equals to 4? x is equals to 2 or x is equals to minus 2. So when you square, you introduce things that might not be necessarily true for the original equation. So we need to test and see which one between these two it is not necessarily true. It is possible sometimes that they are both correct. Sometimes you can find a case like that. But let's test it out. Okay, so when I substitute 0, right, I'm substituting here. And after I substituted here, well, <laughs> it's supposed to give me 2. So minus 2 multiplied by 0 plus 4 minus 0. This gives me 2. So x is equal to 0. It is working, right? Now let me substitute minus 6. So the square root of minus 2 multiplied by minus 6 plus 4 minus minus 6, right? Because uh, that 6 is negative. And then here I get 10. 10 is equal to 2. Obviously, 10 is not equal to 2. So x is equal to 2 minus 6 is not necessarily true for the equation that we started with. That is 1.1.5. Let's take a look at 1.2. So here we have 2x plus y being equal to 3. Well, it's easy to see that our life will be easy if we make y the subject of the formula. If we do that, y is equal to 3 minus 2x. You can call this equation 1. You don't have, you don't really have to do that. But yeah, you can, you can do that. And then now we have x squared plus xy being equal to 2. This is our second equation. And then in place of y, we substitute 3 minus 2x. We square that. Plus x, 3 minus 2x is equal to Two. So let's solve 3 minus 2x squared. So this will give us, uh, well, 4x squared minus 2x multiplied by 3. That is minus 6x. We multiply that by 2. Minus 12x plus 9 plus 3x minus 2x squared. And this is all equals to 2. So 4x squared minus 2x squared, that is 2x squared. Minus 12x plus 3x, that is minus 9x. And the 9 minus 2, right? Uh, that is plus 7. So if you forget these two here and you equate to 0, then yeah, um, it's not going to work out. And then this is equal to 0. Um, obviously, it is very difficult to factorize when we have a coefficient of 2, when the coefficient of x squared is 2. But if you, you know, find your way and you factorize, you should get 2x minus 7. And then here you have x minus 1. But it's always safe to use the quadratic formula. And then x is equal to 7 over 2. Or x is equal to 1. All right. So now we need to find the corresponding values of y. So when x is 7 over 2, what is the value of y? So 3 minus 2 multiplied by 7 over 2. I'm getting minus 4. So one possible value of y is minus 4. What about the case where x is equal to 1? So 3 minus 2 multiplied by 1, I think that just gives us 1. 3 minus 2 multiplied by 1, that gives us 1. So y is equal to 1. Okay, and then let's take a look at 1.3. I did post a video on a question like this not too long ago. So let's take a look. Uh, determine all the values of n for which the product will be an integer value. Let's do that on a separate video. Here we go. So let me know in the comments which video you want me to do next. Right, right now I'm doing 1.3 and I'm going to upload it right now. But tell me, after 1.3, which question should we do next?